Hello everyone, Alex here from warnoffkeys.com and in this video I'm going to show you a new feature within Discord JS called cross-posting. So recently within Discord, they released these announcement channels where people can go in and they can follow the channel and basically get notification of news within other Discord servers. Now within the official Discord API, there was a way to do this. However, Discord JS just released a simple way to do this within version 12.5. And so we'll be taking a look at that within this video. The end goal is to make it so whenever something is posted in one of these announcement channels, it will automatically be published. So the server owners don't have to manually send a message and then click on publish. This is especially useful if you're automating things such as the YouTube content here. I no longer have to manually click on publish here. It will automatically be published to all the followed channels. So with that said, let's get started. I'm going to be using this private GitHub logs, which is a channel coming soon within my Discord server. And I'm going to be trying to follow this within my tutorial channel, both of which are private at the moment. I also have an empty VS Code project here. Within the console, we're going to go ahead and set up this project. We first need to initialize our node project with npm init-y. This will create our package.json file. I'm going to open this up here. And then we need to install some dependencies. So I can use control L to clear my console. I can then run npm install discord.js. We also need to install .env as well as worn off keys commands with WOK commands. If you're using a different command system, it should still work the same way. This is a very simple concept, so don't worry if you're using something else. We can go ahead and press enter and it'll go ahead and install these. Make sure that Discord JS is version 12.5.0. If it isn't for whatever reason, you can install the latest version with npm install discord.js at latest. However, it should be 12.5.0 by the time you're watching this video. So I'm going to go ahead and clear my console here. And now we'll need a couple different files and folders within our workspace. So back in VS Code, I'm going to make a new file called .env. This is going to hold our actual bots token. We'll come back to this soon. We also need index.js, which will be the main starting point of our application. We'll come back to this soon as well. We also need two folders, one of which is a features folder, which is going to hold the code for our actual feature that we're creating within this video. The other one is going to be a commands folder, which won't be actually used, but I'll explain why we need that later on in this video. So let's make a new folder called commands. And then I'm going to click back into the main workspace here and make another new folder called features. So now that we have these, we can go ahead and set up our bot. Within the .env file, I'm going to say token equals, and then I'm going to paste in my bot's token, use yours of course, and I'm going to edit this part out. So now that my token is in there, we're going to be able to use that within our index file. So let's open this up. We're first going to want to import Discord JS. So I could say const Discord JS equals require Discord.js. We also want to import worn off keys commands. So const WOK commands equals require WOK commands. We want to then import and configure the .env package, which will then automatically import all of the things within our .env file and then use those within our environment variables. That way we have actual access to them throughout our project. So we can say require dot env dot config. We can now create a new client for our bot. So const client equals new discord.js dot client with a capital C. We can now listen for whenever this client is ready. So client dot on ready. We're going to then have a callback. And for simplicity, we're just going to simply console log the bot is ready. After this, we want to actually log into our bot. So client dot login. We can then use our environment variable that we now have access to within our .env file. We can access the token variable through process.env.token. I made my token variable within my .env file in all uppercase. That means that I'm using all uppercase on this line as well right here. If we use lowercase, then make sure to use lowercase. Just make sure that it is consistent. So I'm going to save this and we'll set up one off keys commands here in a few seconds. It's fairly simple. But within the actual console, I'm going to use nodemon to make sure that we can actually run the bots and it will automatically restart whenever we make changes to our source code. If you don't have access to nodemon, you can simply install it with npm install nodemon g. And alternatively, you can just simply run the bot with node index.js. But keep in mind that you will have to restart this process every time you make changes to your code. So I'm going to opt into running this with just simply using nodemon. Here we see that the bot is ready. And going into Discord, we now see tutorial is online right here. So with this said, we can go back into VS Code and let's go ahead and configure worn off keys commands. We can do this by saying new worn off keys commands. We can pass in our client. We need to pass in the name of our commands folder, which is going to be simply commands. 
and then we also need to pass in the name of our features folder. And this is why the commands directory is required. Because one of keys commands is mostly a command system, it's going to assume that you're going to be using commands with it. And because we need to access to pass in the name of our features folder, we can do so like this, but this also requires this folder right here, which means that it is going to check to make sure that there's actually a folder there. So now I'm going to go inside my features folder and I'm going to make a new file called auto dash publish. You can call this cross post or anything else that's similar auto publish.js. And to make sure that everything is working, I'm just going to say module.exports equals a function with one parameter, which is a client. And we can then simply listen for a message. So client.on message. We're then going to have a callback with a message parameter here. And I could then console log a message was sent. I could then save both of these files. And going back to Discord within my tutorial channel, I can then say test. And we see that other people are talking within Discord right now. So we see a message was sent. So that means that it is actually registering this listener and running this file automatically thanks to the Vornoff keys commands package. So now let's do something where we can actually listen to see if this is going to be a news channel which means that it has the actual announcements such as the GitHub logs, announcements, YouTube content, and then we can publish that automatically. So I can gain access to the channel by destructuring the channel property from the message object like so. We could then console log channel.type. Now if I save this, it's going to automatically restart. And now if I go back into tutorial and I type test, it is going to say text right here because this is technically a text channel. However, instead of GitHub logs, where this is a news channel, if I type test, it'll then say news. And we see this published right here. This is what we're wanting to actually automate so the server owners don't have to do this manually. And then going back into VS Code, we can now see if channel.type is exactly equal to the string news, which means that something was posted within the news channel, which we can then automatically publish. So if channel.type is exactly equal to news, Within here, we now want to access message.crosspost. Opening up the Discord.js documentation, I can then do a search for message, and we can click on the class right here. If we scroll down, we now see a new method right here. As of 12.5, we can click on this, and this is going to just simply cross-post it to all followed channels. And we see a very basic example here. Let me zoom in real quick, just so you can see this. If message.channel.type is exactly equal to news, similar to what we're doing, we can then invoke message.crosspost, which returns a promise, which we can then handle other functionality. However, we don't necessarily need that. So for simplicity, let's just say message.crosspost. And then let's also add in a console log saying published news message. That way we just understand what happened to make sure our code is actually working. We can go ahead and save this. Our bot restarts. I can go back to Discord. And within GitHub logs, I'm going to click on follow. I'm going to select one off keys and the tutorial channel. I can then click on follow again. Within here, it's going to say that I added one off keys to GitHub logs to the channel. And so now if I were to say test, it will now automatically send this right here. And if we go back into GitHub logs, we see that I cannot publish this because this court understands that I've already automatically done that. So another example, if I just say hello world, it will then automatically publish it to all follow channels. And this is going to save server owners a lot of time, so I wanted to cover it in this video. Thanks for watching this Discord JS tutorial. If you want to learn more about Discord JS, consider clicking on the playlist you see on your screen now. If you need help, feel free to leave a comment or ask in the Warnoff Keys Discord, which can be found in the video description.